Hello, um, and welcome to our, our podcast. Uh, trying to get back in the swing of, of doing these regular podcasts. I, um, I got sick for a few weeks and kind of got out of the rhythm. And so we're uh, trying to get things going again. I, um, I'm really excited to have a, a really special guest um, join us today. Um, have my dad, Leon Slade, who's joining us. And um, today we're going to talk about uh, exercise and the role that exercise plays in the development, the, the creation, um, production, I guess, of neurotransmitters. Um, so, Dad, you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, the reason why I um, had my dad join us today is because he um, has a, a many, many years now of really faithful exercise and, um, and is a really great example of consistently prioritizing exercise and taking care of, um, taking care of his body and, and brain in that way. And, uh, and so I, as I was thinking about, um, you know, who it'd be fun to kind of sit down and talk to about this particular subject, uh, I thought it'd be really fun to, uh, have a conversation with my dad about it and to, kind of pick his brain a little bit on some of the things that he's noticed um, with exercise across the years. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do a, just a, a kind of quick um, explanation for those of you that, that may not be familiar. Uh, our, our theme this month is, is on um, neurology made easy and understanding uh, how the brain works and and what our brains need in order to be healthy. And neurotransmitters are chemical messengers in the brain that um, are sent throughout the brain. Uh, you've, I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard of serotonin and dopamine and GABA and norepinephrine, um, just to name a few. And these are the, you know, kind of the, the most common um, neurotransmitters that we normally talk about. And in order for our neurology, in order for our brains to be able to function well, there are two things that have to be going on. The first thing is that we have to have neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are responsible for things like mental clarity, uh, memory recall, um, sleep, uh, get up and go, um, responsible for uh, you know, our digestive systems working well sex drive, um, their neurotransmitters are, are super, super important in terms of, of our mental health and, and the ability of our brains to be able to function well. And, and sometimes we feel like that's just sort of a mysterious thing that either happens or doesn't happen. But if you, if you understand the science behind it, you know, our, our brains are organs and they work like anything else in order to be able to do their job, they need to have healthy levels of, they need to have the tools so that they can do their jobs well. And um, our brains are eager to, to function well and to, and to help us, but they need the tools to be able to do so. And when it comes to the production of neurotransmitters, there are three things that are necessary in order for our brains to consistently be able to produce healthy levels of neurotransmitters. And those three things are exercise and moderate exercise, healthy nutrition, and adequate sleep. Those are the building blocks. They're the, they're the flour and the sugar and the eggs of almost any recipe that, um, that our brains need in order to be able to produce neurotransmitters. And the reality is that without neurotransmitters, we cannot have the, the benefits that come from them. And um, anyway, so we, I can talk maybe a little bit more about that as we, as we move along, but... Um, so, Dad, what, um, what a, how old were you when you started consistently exercising? Dad, I started running when I was 35. 35? And you're yeah. how old now? 76. I, I think, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I oh, yeah. 77, but you, I'm, I'm giving you an extra year because I, I keep giving myself an extra year, too. I think yeah. that I'm... But I, uh, how old am I? 
I'm, I'm 47, right? If you're, for, if you're 76, I'm 47. I keep thinking I'm 48. Um, so you've been exercising consistently now then for, what, 41 years? 41 years. And how do you feel like, um, like that has benefited you? Well, the uh, exercise uh, saved my life, really, as I look back over it. At the time, I didn't realize that it was doing the good that it was. I just knew that once, after a few years, and I got used to the getting over a five-mile run in, I uh, <clears throat> noticed what a, a benefit it was to making me feel good. So no matter uh, how bad the stress was, if I went out for a run in the afternoon after work, then I felt much, much better than when I didn't. Yeah, and that, you know, that really highlights the, the benefit that exercise is both on the, on the filler side of things, right? By, um, by consistently engaging in that personal filler, it, it gave you resources to be able to, to have enough energy and resources to deal with the strains and the demands in your life, right? Um, right. And the feel goodness, so the, 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 the good feelings that you had absolutely tie into the, to the neurotransmitter benefit of that. Uh, as our brains get good levels of, of those neurotransmitters, we feel good. And, and that's, what you, that's what you started to be able to experience. Um, and then I think kind of, um, became a bit addicted to a bit of a, an exercise junkie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how, um, what kinds of exercise have you, have you done across the years? And have you noticed any difference in different kinds of exercise and the benefits that you have experienced? Okay. The, uh, I didn't realize it, but running seemed to be the best exercise for my entire body. And for my digestive system, uh, the jogging and it helps the digestive system quite a bit. I noticed a big difference. Uh, the, uh, so I've been running and then uh, I like to bike too. And uh, so I logged every mile that I, that I ever run and if I was biking, I'd go by the pattern that that 10 miles biking was equal to a five mile run. So I would log five miles for running. And, and then what, after, have you, what have you logged? Uh, right at 50,000 miles. That's, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> 50,000 <laughs> miles in, in 41 years is pretty darn good. Yeah, it is. It, it's, uh, but once you get hooked on it, it's easy. I mean, it's not easy. Uh, there's a lot of days I would go over the years, maybe only 10 or so days I would go out for a run and I'd get about a mile and turn around, go back home. But, uh, and then I was upset at myself until the next day when I'd get out for a run. Well, so you're, you're hitting a, a, what I think is a pretty important variable. And um, a lot of people, you know, it's, it's difficult to exercise. Um, and, and it's uh, lots of time we, we don't feel like we have time to do it or we don't feel like we have enough um, energy to do it. And it, uh, it can be really difficult to force yourself to, to get out there day in and day out. And, um, and to have that kind of discipline, what do you feel has helped you across the years to be able to do that? Well, when, when I started out, uh, I decided because I had switched jobs and I was in a sedentary job and I read something that said men as young as 35 can start to become senile if they have a sedentary job. And that kind of scared me. So I decided I was going to go or start running and uh, I started out at a half mile and it, and it took me three years to get up to three miles and uh, I went for a life insurance exam and the doctor said well 
you're pretty healthy. What do you do? And I says, well, I've been running, but that's going to end because I can't stand it. I hate it. And he said, well, tell me about it. And so I told him my process. And he said, well, what you have to do is you have to get to a level of four or five miles for the body to get in rhythm. And so I started running. I made it a goal to run at least five and then maybe more. And once I did that, I noticed a, a huge change. And so if I'm going for a five mile run, it used to be an eight mile pace and now it's- Eight minute pace? Yeah, an eight minute pace. And now it's, you know, twice that, but um, so when I would go for it, that would take me uh, five times eight, 40 minutes. So if I rode the, I would ride the bike for 40 minutes to equal that. And at that point, I noticed that it probably had something to do with endorphins or something, but that and the rhythm made a huge difference. That's good. And so what, are you saying that the, that the, one of the things that has kept you going was the, the positive, um, positive feelings that you got out of that? I mean, so on those tough days when it's like, ah, oh, I really don't want to get out or it's winter or, you know, you're tired or whatever, what are, what are the things that have helped you to be able to, con to continue to do that? What? Well one of the things I realized that if I made it two miles, it got easier. I, the first two miles, even after all the years were hard. But I knew in my mind that if I made it two miles, I, I would start feeling good. And then uh, when I got to three, four, five, six, and then that went up, you know, considerably at times, uh, it made a huge difference. And there wasn't anything, uh, I, I would come home from uh, having a stressful day and go for a run. I remember one day I told Sandra that my wife, that uh, I'm gonna run up that mountain until I drop. And if I don't come back, just come up and put a marker out. <laughs> but you know, when I, ran up that mountain, ran back home, everything was okay. Yep. And a huge part of that is the benefit of the, of the neurotransmitter um, and, the, and the way that that affects us, our systems chemically. Um, you know, we, they're, they're neurotransmitters in the brain and they're hormones in the body. And when you talk about endorphins, those are the things that are going on in your body. Um, when you talk about, you know, dopamine and, and serotonin, those are the, the things that are going on in your head. Um, so I'm, I, I still don't feel like you're quite answering my question. Oh, no. <laughs> um, what kept me going? Yeah. And what, yeah, what kept you going? And, and, and on tough days, how did you get yourself out there? And uh, I just, I made it a habit. And I made it a priority. So the night before I, every night, even now, when I go to bed, I, uh, I check the weather and I uh, plan my course for the next day. I'm either gonna go for a run or I'm gonna go for a bike ride or I'm going to exercise. I try to throw in some exercise in for my upper body in there. So I plan that every night. I set it into my brain that tomorrow at such and such a time, I'm going to go for work. So that became part of my, my uh, just a habit. Daily routine. And I knew from experience that if I just pushed myself out the door and started to running or started to biking, that the payday would come before I got back home. That's good. So, so when the next day came and it was tough, you, one, you already had it planned. So there was some good momentum there. And, and two, you knew, cause you had experienced, you knew the benefit that you were going to get out of it. 
Yeah, and I knew that it'd be hard for the first two miles. Right, and then it gets easy, and then it would get easier. Yeah, and it always did. So once you get yeah. that into your brain, into my brain, uh, I could get past that. Yeah. So that's that's another another really good point that you bring up. You know, there are different ways to make to be successful at, at implementing these things into into our lives consistently, and some of that kind of depends on your personality or your temperament, but um, you know, you can, you can plan on a week level, you know, on Sunday, you can say, these are the, these are the things that I'm going to, going to do in the days I'm going to do them. You can plan the night before. Um, but for most people, it's a lot easier to just say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to incorporate this into my life and it's going to be part of what I do every day. That can actually be a lot easier than saying, I'm going to exercise three days a week. Now, while there's benefit in exercising three days a week, it's, it's, much, it's much easier on a given day to kick it to the next day. But if it is just part of how you live your life, and it's not a question of, of if, but what and when you're going to exercise each day, then it makes it much easier to incorporate that. And, and by making that decision you know, the night before and setting out your clothes, and you know, I, I do the same thing. I, um, you know, I get my exercise bag ready um, the night before and get my shoes and, you know, whatever I'm going to do ready so that um, I, I don't have to remake that decision the next day. Um, I want to, I want to uh, put in here, you know, there's, there are, the research shows there, there are excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters, and they have a different function. Excitatory neurotransmitters, and the main ones that we'll talk about are dopamine and, um, and norepinephrine. So excitatory neurotransmitter, every cell has a job that it, that it does. And excitatory neurotransmitters increase the activity of whatever a cell's job is. And so if, it, it, so if, it, if you think about digestion, digestion is an easy one. Yeah, excitatory neurotransmitters help the digestive system go. And so if you don't have enough neurotransmitters, um, then you can get constipated uh, and because your digestive system isn't working well enough. If you have too many excitatory neurotransmitters, then you can have irritable bowel or diarrhea. Um, in, in terms of, so memory recall, you know, uh, neuro, uh, excitatory neurotransmitters help with um, the, the mind's ability to be able to go to the different sections of the brain and recall that information and fire those, fire those neurons so that we can recall the, the memory. Um, if it's sex drive, you know, it increases the, the desire for, for sexuality. Um, excitatory neurotransmitters are like the gas pedal. So the, the, when you, we have good levels of neurotransmitters, it increases activity. So it gives us motivation and, and drive and get up and go. And then the inhibitory neurotransmitters function like a brake pedal. Uh, they, they decrease or slow down whatever a cell's job is. And so they help us, like, they help us to be able to relax. Um, they help us to be able to sleep well, to calm down. Um, and they, again, with digestion, you know, they, they slow down. So if, you, if, you, if you've got irritable bowel or different things like that, and you increase the inhibitory neurotransmitters, it will slow those processes down. Um, and, and so, and serotonin happiness feels like this sort of a contentedness. Everything's good, you know, the world's, the world's good. And dopamine happiness feels more like kind of a, a giddy kind of happiness. And so we really need good levels of both excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters in order for our brains to be function well, to function well. And the research has identified specific exercises that, that can produce or boost um, excitatory neurotransmitters and, an, and another type of um, exercise that can produce or boost inhibitory neurotransmitters. So if you feel like you're low on excitatory neurotransmitters, if you're kind of struggling with, you know, getting out of bed and having motivation, then you want to do a four minute warm up. And then you want to go hard for 30 seconds and hard is defined as whatever it takes to make you out of breath. So you go hard for 30 seconds and then you go easy for 90 seconds. You don't stop and you repeat that seven times. So for a total of eight times, and then you do a, a four minute cool down. 
And so, you know, if, if walking briskly makes you out of breath, then that's where you start for your 30 seconds. If you have to run a five minute mile or you have to go up a steep hill or whatever, then, then that's what you do. And so that's a, that's a hit workout. It's a high intensity interval training workout that has been um, scientifically shown to produce dopamine. So that's what you do if you want to do it, if you want to increase the excitatory neurotransmitters to increase the inhibitory, neuro, to, specifically to increase serotonin, the research shows that you want to get your heart rate elevated and hold it there for 30 consecutive minutes, at least 30 consecutive minutes. And so at that point, our brains start producing serotonin. And so, so it's more of an endurance kind of workout. And so you can do that with yoga, you can do it with running, you can do it with biking, you can do it with Zumba, um, you can do it with weightlifting if you're careful, but all of those things are really conducive to just getting your heart rate up and holding it up. Um, where you can also do, you know, you can with the, with the dopamine, you can also do that running or you can do that biking or, um, you know, in TRX classes or different things. But you just got to be mindful that it's, that, it's that, um, that surge and then coming off of that. And so if you want to make sure that you're giving your brain enough to do both, then you might want to do like three days of, of the dopamine producing workout a week and three days of the serotonin producing workout a week. That's kind of what I try to do. I, um, I normally do a spin class and a road ride and then a mountain bike ride each week um, for my serotonin. And then I do um, either weightlifting or these, you know, cage classes, um, or, or TRX classes three days a week to try to get the dopamine side um, so that I'm, I'm trying to cover all my bases, if that makes sense. Yep. Thought, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, another thing that I think that you're a really good example of is you know a lot of times people will get into a good routine and then when, when life circumstances change, they get out of that routine and, and have a really hard time adapting. And I think that you've been a really good example of, of adapting across the years, you know, um, whether you, you know, if it's been when we've moved or you've moved or, you know, different jobs that you've had, um, you know, and, and, and then as you've, as you've gotten older, um, you know, what, what was about four, was it four years ago that you had your heart attack? Five. Five years ago. So, yeah. so five years ago, um, my dad had a, a, a pretty significant heart attack. He was actually out on run when he had the heart attack um, and uh, walked home and uh, ended up having quintuple bypass surgery. Um, and, and as also, as I'll just brag on you for a minute, as, as um, he's aged also, he's had some neuropathy in his feet that have made running more difficult. And, and rather than, rather than just saying, well, I can't do this activity that I love anymore, or I can't run and, and, you know, and take care of my, my body and my brain the way that I'm used to for all these years. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to stop. Um, he started biking and, um, and was creative and, and being able to find a way to still give his system what it needed to, to be able to be healthy. Because you can't, again, your brain can't produce something from nothing, no matter how badly you want it to. If you don't give it the building blocks, you don't get the benefits of that. And so I, I think that you've been a really good example of, of um, keeping kind of your eye on the prize and adapting as, as you've needed to be able to continue to do that. Um, would you mind talking a little bit about that? Well, yeah. That, that <clears throat> that's been really hard because uh, I had set a goal to run 40 marathons before I was 80. And at, at 31 marathons, I had to stop running marathons because of the neuropathy. And uh, when, when all of the tests <clears throat> made me realize that that wasn't going away, I... Uh, decided to start biking but but as you know biking doesn't quite give you the uh, the exercise that running does 
It doesn't what? <clears throat> running is harder than biking. It's just it depends on where you're biking. <laughs> just regular biking. You know, if you're just if you go out, you can run on a level path and get a really good hard run. Uh, but if you do that on a bike, it's not as strenuous. Right. And so so yeah. what I uh, did was I started to I located some hills and some harder rides that really pushed me. And, uh, and I can tell by, I, I've had a few setbacks where I've had to stop running for a little while. And uh, so then it takes me several months to get back to the level I was at. And uh, I have one, one hill that I, if I can ride up that hill, I know that I'm back. That's the marker, huh? That's the marker. And once I reach that, I'm, I'm uh, actually ecstatic. I feel really good about myself. And so I, I keep that hill in my weekly routine. That's good. What you've been saying, I've, you've just taught me something valuable that I've, I, I've always done intervals or a type of an interval. Go hard for three minutes, rest for one uh, on a bike, you know, a stationary bike. Or, and uh, the thing I like about riding the bike outside is it builds those things in. It's just natural. Right, it, it happens naturally. Yeah, I don't have to worry about it. But running, I would uh, right. always try to do uh, interval training. And there was one thing that I realized that has kept me running uh, is it's hard sometimes if you're going to run 10 miles, it takes you a little while to do that. So when we was having any kind of family activity or something going on and it was hard to work out, uh, work a run into the day, I would leave early and run to the activity. And then Sandra and then my family would drive. And I'd plan it out so we got there at the same time. That way I was not taken away from, from um, family. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the one of the things that I'm I'm really grateful for, a couple of things as it relates to exercise. Um, one is I, you know, I, I'm really grateful for the example that you've consistently um, shown me and uh, you know, when, when you were 35, I was, what, six? Um, and so for my whole life, uh, you know, you, this has been part of your routine. And I'm, I'm really grateful that, I mean, long before I understood any of the science behind the brain or anything, I, um, I really appreciated your example. And you've always been a really good example of that. And the other thing that I'm really grateful for is that, um, you know, we've had a lot of really wonderful experiences as we've um, trained for races or done different things across the years and um, you know we've we've run the Grand Canyon and we um, did another big run in the um, into the Havasupai Indian Reservation and um, and uh, you know we ran an ultra marathon in Texas um, several years ago and um, <clears throat> and so with with my dad and, and also with my brother and um, probably should have had, had my, my brother join us as well. Would have been a fun thing to do, but, um, it's, we, exercise has been, has given us a lot of great relationship fillers that, um, that have been real cherished memories of mine and, uh, and, and fun experiences, you know, <laughs> we, um, I think I was, wow, how old was I? 18 or, um, I was probably 18 when we ran the Havasupai Indian Reservation and we, <laughs> we uh, approached it from the wrong side of, um, <laughs> the, the, the Havasupai Indian Reservation is in the western end of the Grand Canyon. And uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, most, one of the most beautiful things that you can imagine. And me and my dad and my brother ran that when I was probably 18 and we 
we came in on the eastern side of the Grand Canyon and um, started taking these roads to try to get across to where we needed to be. And we were on these dirt roads for, I don't know how many hours, two or three hours, it seems like, I don't know. Yeah, at least. <laughs> and and they were, they were, it was on an, an Indian reservation and in the middle of nowhere, no markers, dirt roads with tons of forks in the road. And, and so we would, you know, we'd start going down one road and wouldn't feel like we were on the right road and we had no map and turn around and go back. And, um, you know, and, and it was, it was frankly a bit of a miracle that we, we ended up getting there. And I, and actually, you know, it was one of the, one of the experiences in my life that, um, kind of developed my, my faith and, uh, and belief in prayer because, yeah, you know, I, I, I felt like we were really guided, um, as we, as we tried to decide whether to take a right or left turn and, um, and we anyway, made it across and ended up having that great experience. So I'm really grateful for, for those memories that exercises brought into our family. You have any thoughts on that or? Oh yeah, that, that's one of the highlights is, and uh, well, you're, you're just getting into the time when you know how it feels to have your boy go for a run with you. And uh, those are been, have been the most choicest experiences. And uh, uh, we, we've had experiences when we, you know, when we was in the bottom of the uh, uh, have a soup pie and it started to rain. And, and it wasn't just a little rain, it was a huge rain. And, and uh, but before, we uh, went on that run. You uh, said, "Why don't we have a prayer and said a prayer and ask Heavenly Father to stop the rain because the clouds were, you know, it was kind of scary." But and uh, let us have this run. Well, as we was coming back out, it started to rain, and by the time we got to our car, it was a downpour. But all of the time going down and into the Havasupai, uh, it was it was nice weather. And, it was, and as soon as we got to the end of our run, the skies opened up and just dumped water on us. Yep. And those times were, you know, that's great experiences to, to uh, share. Yep, they are. And I have, you know, I, I have, uh, my little boys aren't old enough yet, but I've, I've been able to experience those things with my girls and, and had some great adventures with them as well as we've, as we've incorporated these things in and backpacking trips and runs. And it's a, it's a great example that you've shown for us and that um, is, cont is continuing on in the generations that are following here. Well, that's, uh, probably about as long as anybody wants to listen to us, dad. <laughs> I, um, I, I really appreciate, uh, appreciate your, you taking the time and, and joining. I know it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but I just, I really want to punctuate that um, the importance of exercise in terms of, of, of brain health and, um, and giving, giving your brain the, the resources that it needs to be able to produce those neurotransmitters. Um, this is one area where the law of the harvest really is, is seen day in and day out that you, you, can't, you can't reap the benefits of, of a healthy brain and healthy neurotransmitters and all of the great emotional things that come with those neurotransmitters without sowing day in and day out the, the uh, consistent and hard work of exercise. Uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. I hope I can keep doing it until I've got one foot in the grave. Well, you can, I guess, if you if we have to get out there and push you on a on a trike, we can. <laughs> yep. Any an e bike might be the next the next phase there, which keep you going. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm about tired of these e bikes passing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why they're passing you. So anyway, hopefully that's been helpful information, and um, and I appreciate you know your listeners kind of indulging um, our opportunity to kind of talk with each other. So, 
uh, hopefully it's been enjoyable and um, we'll catch you next week. We'll, we'll have a little addendum here. Dad wanted to add something. Ready? Yeah. I, uh, Denim's daughter, when she was, daughter Rachel, when she got into uh, middle school and high school, she started running. And so a lot of training, Rachel and I did together in El Paso. And uh, man, that, that was one of my choicest experiences to run with her. And then uh, she did something for me. Uh, they had a, a, I can't even remember what the meet was or what the occasion, but uh, the whole, uh, I got to run with the whole uh, high school track team. Got to run a, a race with them. And uh, that was really great. And yep. joy experiences. Yeah, and it, when you combine family with, uh, you combine family with the good chemicals going on in the brain, it's a great thing. And, and, um, and I, I know that those are, those are, are special memories for Rachel too. And, um, and part of that time you were stepping in for me because I had had my knee replacement surgery and I couldn't be there. And, um, and it was a great blessing to have you um, be able to step in and, pinch hit for me and and also have those memories with her so those are great so th thanks for sharing that yeah